Hi guys, greetings from Portugal. I'm Sandra and today we will explain how to install and set up the new Fly RRF E3 board and the touch display from Mellow on the Creality Ender 3. So, if you want to know all the details, then stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. A few weeks ago, we made a video with the overview of the Fly RRF E3 from Mello and we explain each and every input and output of this board. Today, we will explain how to install it on a Creality Ender 3, but before we do that, let's recap all the connectors. The size of the board is exactly the same as the Creality Stock 1, and the majority of the connectors are the same and at the same location, which means that in terms of hardware, replacing the Stock 1 with this one is not difficult at all. It has four slots for four replaceable drivers, and although it has one slot for one Z-axis stepper driver, it has two Z-output connectors. These connectors are wired in series. Apart from the connectors that have the same function as the stock board, this one has a few additional ones. It has a connector for a mellow TFT display, PT100 thermocouple, and BL touch. Then, we have like the stock board, an always-on fan output and a PWM control fan output. This board has an additional PWM fan output, which can be used for example to control the hot end fan and program it to turn on after a set temperature. Next to the graphic display connector, there are a couple of switches. The first one is only used when burning the bootloader at the factory. The second one is the reset button. There are also a couple of jumper pins. The logic circuit is protected with a diode, which means it will not be 5 volts exactly. These jumpers will bypass that protection and therefore get the 5 volts. Because the two Z-axis connectors are wired in series, if we want to connect only one Z-stepper motor, we need to close the circuit with a couple of jumpers. If we don't do this, the circuit will be opened and the Z motor will not turn. To install on our board, we have four TMCs 2209 from Mello. These drivers have the UART and DIAC pins extended at the top. One important detail about this board is that it has no DIAC jumpers to enable or disable the sensorless homing pins. If you have the drivers from Mello, at the bottom you will find a dip switch that is used to disable the DIAC pin. But if you plan on using drivers from a different manufacturer and you don't want to use the sensorless homing feature, you will need to cut or bend the driver's DIAC pin. With the board, we received a couple of smaller heatsinks. These heatsinks are shorter when compared with the ones that came with the drivers. The shorter ones need to be installed on the drivers located under the board's cooling fan because the taller heatsinks are too tall and will reach the fan. The driver slots have jumpers for configuration. With the jumpers installed this way, the drivers will be set as standalone mode. Installed like this will set the SPI mode. And like this will set the UART mode. For the TMCs 2209, we will want to set as UART mode. The two drivers with the taller heatsinks are installed at the left, and the two drivers with the shorter heatsinks are installed at the right. If you plan on using the stock Ender 3 display, make sure you include the jumper on the J2 pins, otherwise you will get a very dim image. OK. Start by turning off the printer and open the board's cover panel. On the Creality Ender 3, the panel is located at the top, 
and on the Ender 3 Pro, the cover panel is located at the bottom. Carefully take the panel out and disconnect the board cooling fan. Some wires have tags on them, but some don't. So make sure you label the ones that don't before disconnecting all of them. Now you can disconnect everything and remove the four screws that secure the board. Before installing the new board, we recommend three things. One is to install the Wi-Fi antenna first. Second, we always mention this in our tutorials and is related with the wires that don't have connectors. Some manufacturers and Creality included normally tin these wires with solder. This is not a good idea and can cause several issues. The best procedure is to crimp ferrules on these wires, as they will make a better and secure electrical connection. You can crimp the wires for the fan that is always on together with the power wires. The stock Ender 3 hot and fan is always on, so if you want to keep the same setup, you can crimp the wires together. And third is to connect the power supply, heat bed and hot end wires before installing the board. For the power supply wires, connect the red, which is the positive, near the big grey capacitor and the black, which is the negative, near the corner of the board. Next are the wires for the hot end fan. As we said, if you want to keep the same setup and have this fan always on, you can crimp them together with the power supply wires or connect them here. The positive is at the left and the negative is at the right. If you prefer to have the hot end fan controlled by the firmware, connect it to the fan 1 connector. Next is the heat bed heater wires. And then the hot end heater wires. Okay, now we can install the board and secure it with the same four screws. Be careful with the Wi-Fi antenna and make sure it doesn't get pinched in the process. For the layer cooling fan, which is the one with the blue and yellow wires, you need to connect to the fan zero connector. Next, connect the X axis and stop, the Y axis and stop, and if you are not using any leveling sensor, the Z axis and stop. Then connect the heat bed thermistor and the hot end thermistor. As for the fan that is attached to the panel and cools down the board, it's connected to the fan 2 connector. If you have a BL Touch sensor installed, you can connect it on the BL Touch pins. The sensor wires must be connected near the EXP connector and the trigger wires must be connected next. The stock Ender 3 display will also work with RepRap firmware, so if you want to use it, connect it on the EXP connector. Don't forget to install the jumper cap on the J2 pins. Mellow also has a touch display that will work with this board. If you have that TFT display, you can connect it here. Last but not least are the stepper motor connectors. First is the X-axis stepper motor, then the Y-axis and then the Z-axis. For the Z, if you only have one Z stepper motor, you can connect on any of the two outputs. Finally, is the extruder stepper motor. As for the Wi-Fi antenna, you can pass it outside using the side openings and then glue it to the side panel. Ok, all done. Now, our board came with no firmware installed, so we need to get the firmware files and install them. 
Also, since RipRap will always need a memory card inserted with the configuration files in it to boot up, we will also need to get those. There are a couple of ways to get all the files. One is downloading them from the manufacturer GitHub page. The other is getting them from Team Gloomy's GitHub page. From the manufacturer GitHub page, you have all the files you need for the Ender 3. Copy all these to the memory card. On the memory card, you should have all these files. The alternative is getting the files from Team Gloomy's GitHub page, where you can find the latest ESP and RipRap versions. You can check below in the video description for all the links. For RipRap, the file you need is the one with the STM32F4 and ESP8266 on the name. The file name that we need to have in the memory card must be firmware.bin, so you need to rename it. This one must be on the root of the memory card. And for the ESP, download the one that has STM32F4 on the name. The file name that we need to have in the memory card must be duetwifiserver.bin, so you need to rename this one as well. On Team Gloomy's website, you can also find the config files, and also the DWC files. Extract both to the memory card as well. The DWC files must be saved inside a folder with the name www. They also have the config files for the Ender 3 with BLTouch installed. One last note, and very important one, is regarding the ESP firmware file. If you download version 3.2.2 or any other below that one, then the bin file must be placed inside the SYS folder. If you download a version above 3.2.2, then it must be placed inside a folder with the name firmware. Only the RepRap firmware, which is the firmware.bin file, is placed in the root of the memory card. And there's also a configurator online that you can use to build up your files. At the end, you get all the files you need and includes the RipRap firmware, the ESP firmware, and config files. If you want to use the stock Ender 3 display with RipRap, you will need the menu files. If you don't have a folder with the name menu and with the files in it, you will need to download the files from here and copy them to a menu folder on the memory card. You will also need to edit the board.txt file that is located in the SYS folder. So, get a file editor, such as Notepad++, and add these lines at the bottom of the file. Next, open the config.g file and add this line at the end. If this line is already there, leave it as is. Regardless of where you get the files, this is what you need to have on the memory card. The RipRap firmware, the ESP firmware, as we mentioned, it can be inside the firmware folder or inside the SYS folder depending on the version you get. The folder structure with all the config files inside, the DWC files, and the menu files if you want to use the stock Ender 3 display. OK, insert the memory card in the printer's memory card slot and turn the printer on. It will automatically install RepRap's firmware. To install the ESP firmware, you need to connect a computer to the board using a USB cable. Next, get a terminal software, such as Printerface for example. If your slicer has terminal option, you can use it as well. In a few seconds, the computer should recognize the board automatically. You can confirm if the board is being recognized by your operating system using the device manager. Here, you can also check which port number is being used, and then connect the terminal to the board using the correct port number. In this case, our terminal will start communicating with the board, and from here, we know that the communication is working. Other terminals might not do that, so in that case, you can type M115 and enter, and check if you get a reply back. Next, type M997 space S1. 
This will tell the ESP module to update the firmware. Now we need to program the network's SSID and password so that the ESP module can use the Wi-Fi. First, switch the ESP module state to idle using the command M552 space S0 and enter. To enter the credentials, you use the M587 command followed by space, then S, open quotes, here you enter your SSID name, close quotes, space, then the letter P, open quotes, and then you type your password, close quotes again, and type enter. Some terminals like Printerface, for example, will ignore lowercase letters and send everything in capital letters. So, if your credentials have lowercase letters, then you need to add a single quote before each lowercase letter like this. Next, turn the ESP module on again by using the command M552 space S1 and enter. From this point on, the ESP should connect to your network. To access the DWC, just open an internet browser and type in the IP address of the ESP module. The IP address might be different the next time you turn on the printer. If you have your stock Ender 3 display connected and configured, you can check the IP address that was acquired on the display. If you prefer the TFT display instead, here's how you can install it. Start by printing the mount for the TFT display, and then remove the stock one. Use four screws and nuts to secure the TFT to the mount. Connect the cable at the back and install it using the same two screws from the stock display. Working with this display is very simple. The main screen is where we select and load the files to print. Then, in the Home tab, we can home each access or all at once. In this menu, it's also possible to disable the stepper motors. In heating, we can heat up the nozzle and heat bed. In move, we can again home each axis and move them in 0 0.1, 1, 10 and 100 mm increments. In the extruder tab, we can control the extruder. In leveling, we can level the bed and test the BL touch if the printer is equipped with one. And in parameters, there are a few settings on display. In More and in the Wi-Fi tab, we can check the IP address. In Firmware Set, we have nothing on display, but in the G-Codes tab, we can send G-Code commands using the on-screen keyboard. And finally, in the Screen Set tab, we can set a password for the display, control the brightness, and calibrate the touch. To access DWC and remotely control the printer, open your internet browser and type in the board's IP address. And this is the DWC. From here, you can control your printer. In the video description below, you can also find links to detailed instructions on how to use the DWC. The first thing we recommend to do is to check if everything is working correctly. You can start by checking your temperature readings. And then, turn on the nozzle and bed heaters. Keep your finger ready on the off switch in case something is not correctly set up and you need to stop the machine. Next, home each axis individually to confirm that the motors are turning in the right direction and that the end stops, if you are using them, are being correctly triggered. You can then move each axis back and forth to confirm that they are moving the correct amount. Finally, you can check if the layer cooling fan is running when moving the fan slider. From this point on, you can run all your calibrations and then, if everything is working ok, you can then start your first print with this new board. If you get a rising much slowly than expected error, 
when trying to heat up the heat bed or nozzle, then you really need to run the PID calibration. To do that, just send the command M303 space H0 space S60 to calibrate the heat bed PID. And M303 space T0 space S200 for the hot end PID. These PID calibrations will take some amount of time, so don't worry. At the end, send M500 to store the data. Now, you can then install back the cover panel. This board is also compatible with Marlin firmware. If you want to use Marlin instead of RepRap, the procedure is much easier. Just download Marlin firmware, install Visual Code Studio and Platform I.O. and compile it. The compiled firmware file can be found here. Just copy this bin file to the memory card, insert the memory card in the printer's memory card slot and turn the printer on. The printer will update the firmware automatically. With Marlin, you can use the stock display which will work as normal or with the TFT. However, for the TFT to work with Marlin, you need to update the screen firmware. To do that, get a blank microSD card and copy the update.img file and the config folder to it. Place the memory card in the TFT card slot and turn the printer on. It will ask if you want to upgrade, so go ahead and upgrade. With the Marlon version, you get almost the same menus. The main difference is in the More tab. Here you can access several settings such as steps, speeds, accelerations, PID and TMC output current. If you decide to return to RipRap, don't forget to update the TFT as well, using the same procedure but with the update.img file dedicated for RepRap. And your new board is now ready. Don't forget to check the video description for all the links. And that's it you guys! Hope you liked the video and if yes, please don't forget to give it a like and share it with your friends. We will see you guys next time. Bye!